We are continuing our election coverage this morning as we await vote, votes from uh, key states to see uh, which party will control the Senate and the House. Joining us now to break down those and other local races is Dr. Ed Shervinak from UNO. Thanks for coming in, Ed. Uh, first of all, what surprised you last night? Let's start nationally first. Well, what surprised, <clears throat> excuse me, what surprised me most was that we didn't see the red wave that everyone had predicted. That Which historically does happen. Yes, historically does happen. In fact, that... Whether the, it's red or, or blue. Whether it's red or blue, it's all about, uh, midterms are about voting against the party in power, the party that basically holds the White House. And on average, the party that holds the White House loses about 27 seats. And, and so right now you're looking at a president who has, who is, is not rated very high. His, his ratings are, are fairly low. Um, he has gotten a lot accomplished, but hasn't gotten a lot, of, a lot of credit for that. And the economy and inflation are just kind of out of control right now. So those are the, so certainly when you look at the president being underwater with his approval rating, when people are concerned about rising prices, <clears throat> basically that says, all right, we're going to throw uh, everyone, it, all the Democrats out of Congress and put Republicans in charge. But other issues came about, such as abortion. Um, and so it may have been more of a referendum against the Supreme Court than say the White House. This time so so what does this tell you where we are nationally? Because, you know, it, 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 the big criticism about Republicans, it has become the party of Trump, not the Republican Party anymore. Uh, Democrats are, are still in kind of a flux as to who should be the, you know, the next presidential candidate, uh, Biden or somebody else. Right. So what the results show us is that we are fairly evenly divided society and as well as also being relatively polarized. And so people are, are more concerned about voting against the other party than they are supporting their own party. Would you party. call this a wake up call to both parties? Uh, I would, s I think the Democrats are thrilled about the well, results. Yeah, clearly. But Republicans gotta be scratching a hair going, okay, where did we go wrong? Um, was it too much reliance on the election deniers, the, you know, this internalization of Trumpism? Um, you know, is the American public more moderate than, say, a, a number of Republicans? And so and, that's what and, they got to be concerned and about. And whether you're Democrat or Republican, uh, if you live here in Louisiana, if the Republicans do take the House, and they, they likely will, uh, Steve Scalise is in a position of, of power, whether it be the, the leader or if McCarthy can't get the votes he needs for the uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Scalise could be you know, in line for that. Absolutely. So I suspect that given the, the results and, and the concerns about Kevin McCarthy, that Steve Scalise would throw his hat in the ring, become majority leader, and that would be huge for the state of Louisiana because that way that Louisiana is on the agenda all right, that the majority leader wants to make sure that his state is taken care of. All right, now let, let's, let's go to local politics. Uh, any surprises there for you? Um, no, no real surprises. Um, I, I wasn't sure where the charter change was going to go because there was very little campaigning done. It. There yeah. was no one really for it, and there was no one out there against it. And it typically would have been the mayor who would have been out there campaigning against it. Well, and, and we had Helena Moreno and J.P. Morell on the show yesterday, and I asked them, is this a power grab by the council? Uh, Helena uh, said that, that she's been asked that before, but no, it's anything but that. She said other parishes, other cities do have the same kind of an arrangement, and there needs to be more, uh, you know, more vetting of, of people in high positions. So it may not be a power grab, but it's certainly a power shift um, yeah. because we do have a strong mayor model that gives the, the mayor sole discretionary authority on appointing her department heads. And so giving the council power to vet these individuals, basically they're calling it uh, you know, for transparency, for accountability, that we get to know who these people are, hear what they have to say, you know, what their priority is going to be when they go into running these departments. If the mayor were more popular than she is now, do you think there would have been a different outcome? It's hard to say. I think that if the mayor was more popular and she had political capital, that she would have probably campaigned against this much more harder. I, I think that the fact that she is unpopular muted her uh, because if she would have come out and said, I'm against this, that may have generated more support for the charter change. And now what about the eight amendments that uh, everybody in the state voted on? Uh, some, of those, some of the outcomes on that kind of surprised me. 
Yeah, I was really surprised by the property tax amendment. That, yeah, because um, I, you know, that's one of the big issues locally is this increase. It in was housing close. Values. Yes, increase in housing values, increase in property taxes. All of a sudden, you're getting hit with a big bill. You know, one year uh, after your you know typical bill, and so I would have thought people would have you know, wanted some relief from that, but obviously not. They well, and, and a lot of times, as with most amendments, they are worded in a way that make them hard to understand. We try to explain a lot of those on the news, <laughs> but once you get in the voting booth and not everybody watches the news, it's hard to understand, and, and it's not being voted on just by property owners. <laughs> it's voted on by everybody. And, you know, the thing about <laughs> when it's confusing language, the default is to say no. And so I, I wonder if they just do the confusing language just to basically prevent it from, you know, winning or, you know, but or just written by lawyers and this is just how they speak. And then the, the, the seat that was held by Karen Carter Peterson. Yeah, that was a, uh, a good, tough campaign. It was a tough campaign there. And uh, I don't think residents in that district would be disappointed with either, you know, if either one of them would have won, the residents there would not have been disappointed. They're both good candidates. Uh, they're very close in terms of their philosophy and, and where they stand on the issues. And so I, I, I think Royce will do a good job there. Now, now going back to national politics, what, what do you foresee happening in the next couple of days with, with the, the control of Congress and the control of the, of the Senate? Well, you know, a number of states are going to continue to be counting ballots. Um, you know, states administer elections and they have different rules. Some states are now counting early vote ballots. Some states aren't counting them until right now or basically uh, tomorrow and so we won't know maybe until Friday or Saturday when what the what the partisan breakdown is of the house and, and depending on what what Trump says and what other people <laughs> say afterwards all right thank you Ed for coming and we appreciate that we of course will be following all the uh, the results from the election all day long we'll have a breakdown of all the local state and national races on our mobile app and our website wwltv.com